Hello, hello, this is Dion Blanks with the Economic Empowerment Circle. And today I will be doing a tutorial on creating your M1 Finance Portfolio. Before I get started, I will start like I always do with a disclaimer. This is not investment advice. This content is for informational and educational purposes only. There are risks associated with investing in securities. Investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange traded funds, and money market funds involves risk of loss. Loss of principal is possible. All right, just before I get started, if you're not familiar, my name is Dion Blanks. I am an investment education consultant with the Economic Empowerment Circle. I'm also an accredited financial counselor. I have a bachelor's degree in finance from North Carolina a and State University, Aggie Pride. I also have over two decades of experience in financial services, specifically in wealth management and institutional trust. And most importantly, I've assisted over 130 plus families with crafting profitable and customized portfolios. All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is going through M1 Finance. I really, really like this uh, M1 Finance brokerage because they allow you to create what's called stock pies and they automate your investing for you. So you don't have to think about, okay, I need to go in here and purchase this stock. You know, after you get everything set up, they will actually allow you to uh, set up recurring payments and they will go ahead and allocate your funds the way that you designate during your setup. So we're going to go ahead and get started and I will walk you through exactly what I'm talking about. And you can see if this is right for you, I'm going to walk through every single step of the setup process so that you can be prepared. So one thing that I want to call to your attention is you'll probably want to go ahead and get all documentation ready and have it scanned in and saved to your desktop already before you get started with the setup process with M1 Finance. One thing that they do want you to do is to upload your driver's license and either a utility bill or a bank statement with your current address on it. So before you even get started, you can just have those two things saved to your desktop. So when it becomes uh, it comes time to upload them, you'll already have access to them on your desktop. All you have to do is upload and send, okay? So we'll get to that a little bit later. So this is the desktop version. M1 Finance has an awesome app that you can use as well. But I'm going to walk through how to set up your M1 Finance account on your desktop first. And then you can set it up on your, you can actually just log into the app on your phone and all the information that you set up on your desktop will also appear on the app as well. So as I stated, we're just going to use the desktop to set it up. First thing you want to do is enter an email address and password. Just create a password and click sign up now. They are going to allow you to create your stock pie first. And we'll get into exactly what that means. But before you do that, go ahead and verify the email address that you have put in. They're going to send you a verification email. So you'll need to have this done before you're able to connect your bank account to M1 Finance. So you can go ahead and pause and go ahead and verify that email address um, before we go further. Or, you know, you'll see where we get stopped a little bit later on and you'll have to verify that email anyway. Okay, so just go ahead and verify that email address that has been sent and received. So we're gonna get into creating our pie, but first we're gonna go ahead and explain exactly what is a pie. So this is a pie. Pies are the building blocks to organize and manage your M1 portfolio. It basically means the stocks and the ETFs that are going to make up your investment account. So if you choose Target, for example, you can have um, a retail stock pie and it can include, for example, Walmart and Target and other retailers, raw stores or whatever you want to include in that retail pie. You can also have something like a restaurant pie, stock pie, where you have, say, Wendy's and McDonald's and, you know, other places like that that you want to include in your, re your restaurant stock pie. So it's just a way for you to organize your investments. For me, I like to have a dividend-based stock pie and also a growth-based stock pie. So in my dividend portfolio or stock pie, I will have companies, of, obviously, that pay dividends. In my growth portfolio, I may have companies like Facebook or Netflix that are great growth companies that don't necessarily pay any dividends at all. So how you divide up your stock pies and your portfolios is up to you. So you can have stock pies that serve different purposes. And that's what I love about M1 Finance. They allow you to create any number of stock pies and divide your um, your investments up into those stock pies so that you can kind of track the returns and what each of those stock pies are doing for you, okay? 
So in this case, whenever we get started, the first thing they're going to allow you to do before you even open up an account is create your first stock pie so that you can see how easy it is. So as you can see, it's going to ask you to pick at least three investments that interest you. One thing about M1 Finance, it allows you to pick individual stock, but it all, stocks, but it also allows you to choose ETFs as well. So you can have an all stock pie portfolio or you can have some that include ETFs as well. In this case, I'm just going to go with the popular stocks that they have here listed. They happen to be the FANG stocks. So I'll go ahead and walk you through how to create a growth portfolio, for example, using these stocks that are already listed here. Now, you don't have to use any of the popular stocks at all. If not, you can just type in the actual ticker symbol of the companies that you want to include in your stock pie. Say, for example, you want to include Apple. The ticker symbol or nickname for Apple, um, the ticker symbol is the symbol that it goes by on all of the exchanges, is AAPL. So you can either type in the ticker symbol or you can type in the company name. And then all you want to do is click the plus sign here and it will add to your stock pie. Now, after you have all of the stocks selected that you want, it has to be at least three. In this case, we have about six or seven that we have selected here. We want to click continue. And from there, you just want to verify that everything listed is how you want it. If you were to continue to scroll down, you would see that all seven of the companies that I chose are listed down there. So you just want to verify before you continue. After you verify, now all of these picks that you've chosen become slices of your pie. So whenever you do this, they are, uh, the system is going to automatically weight, equal, uh, weight these uh, slices equally. So you can make changes to these. So for example, if we have seven companies, they're going to allocate 15, 14 to 15% to each of those. This is the way that they're automatically going to do it. They're going to try to equally weight each of these slices. So in other words, if we have a $100 deposit, this is telling us that 15 of those dollars is going to go to Apple, 15 to Microsoft, 14 to Facebook, and so on and so forth. You do not have to stick with this clearly. So say, for example, for Apple, I want to invest a little bit heavier in Apple. I can change this to make this slice 32% and the other ones I can adjust accordingly. As long as they all add up to 100%, you can adjust these figures however you see fit so that you can make sure that your funds are being allocated the way that you want them allocated whenever you make your contributions to your M1 account. Now, after you've created your stock pod, the first thing they're going to show you is how much you would have gained had you done this five years ago. This is kind of, you know, nice to know. So in this case, if you would have, it says a $10,000 investment in this pie five years ago would have resulted in gains of $105,781. So this is great information to know because it kind of, you know, kicks you into gear to let you know that, you know, stop wasting time as far as creating your stock portfolio uh, and go ahead and start to invest and get in the game at least. At least you can see what you would have done, what this portfolio, these choices would have uh, gain you in the last five years had you started then. So go ahead and start now. Um, that's all that it's trying to show you there. So now M1 Finance, after you have your stock pie created, uh, it uses intelligent automation to make your investing life very, very easy. So we'll go through exactly how to set up your recurring contributions to M1 Finance, or you can do one-time deposits. I personally love the fact that they allow you to set up recurring contributions, whereas whenever you connect your bank account, they can go into your checking account and automatically make those withdrawals from your checking account, deposit it into your M1 brokerage account. And from that point, they take it from there. However, you said you wanted those funds allocated in that last slide. You know, that's exactly how they're going to allocate it on your behalf each time they receive a contribution via your recurring deposit. So it's really a set it or set it and forget it type thing. Um, you don't have to go in and manually make purchases into your portfolio every single week or month or whatever frequency you choose. So it, their automated system is, is very awesome. I really love the stock pies and the fact that uh, they allow you to create as many as you want and organize it however you feel best for you. And they also have the automation so that you're able to um, basically set up your connection with your bank and they're able to pull that money and allocate it as you designate, okay? Now, one thing to note about setting up your stock pie, all we did was set up our pie. It is not a part of our portfolio yet. So you can set up as many stock pies as you wish. You don't even have to use 
all of them. You can just set them up and they will go into your unused portfolio or unused stock pie pile and you can choose when or if you ever add them to your actual portfolio. So let me slow down there. Whenever you do not have a stock pie added to your portfolio, it's just sitting there, it's unused. In other words, whenever you make a contribution to your M1 brokerage account, whenever they go to allocate it, they're only going to allocate funds to stock pies that you've added to your portfolio. Otherwise, they will not allocate any funds to your portfolio. So say if we stop right here, we've created a stock pie, but it's not a part of our portfolio. So any contributions that we make to M1 Finance will sit there in cash until we actually add a stock pie to our portfolio to let the system know, hey, now start using our stock pie and allocate it the way that we designate it for that specific stock pie. So it's very important to understand that your stock pie does not automatically become a part of your portfolio. So it will not automatically start receiving funds from your um, contributions. It won't be, you know, anything won't be allocated to that stock pie until you actually add it to your portfolio. And we'll walk through that in a second. Okay, so after you've created your stock pie, now it's time to open up your account. That's actually the second step, which is uh, very interesting. They allow you to create your stock pie before you even open up your account or give them the information to do so. So this is very basic information. They're going to text you a code and to verify your phone number. And after you have that code, you can go on and enter in your confirmation code and continue with the process. Here you want to enter in your full legal name and also confirm that this is your legal name. It is required for opening up your account um, with M1 Finance. Here's just basic profile information, your date of birth, your citizenship, as well as your employment status. And from here, they're gonna go on to the know your customer rules. They're gonna ask you a slew of questions about your investment history, your income and that type of thing. So we'll walk through each one of those so you can be prepared for that as well. So the first question is, what is your approximate annual income? You select whatever is relevant to you there. Then what is your total net worth? This is basically asking you your assets minus your liabilities. What do you have? So if you have a house that's worth, say, $500,000, you only have $50,000 left on it. You have $450,000 in equity on that house. So if that's all the assets and liabilities that you owe, your net worth would be $450,000 you would go ahead and choose the correct um, net worth there. So with this, you just want to give an estimate of how much you are worth after you pay off all of your debts and liabilities, how much in assets you have left, um, and you would choose that information there. Okay, the next thing is what is your liquid net worth? This is basically saying how much you have in cash, how much you have in money market, something that is liquid and very easily easy for you to access. What is your liquid net worth? Um, that's, you know, what's asking for there. Now, your investing experience. If you've gone through my investment boot camps, yours is going to be good. You have gone through everything that you needed to need to know in order to make great investment decisions. So you can choose good there. If you have not gone through my boot camp and this is the first time you're looking at a tutorial of mine, of course, you can choose whatever is relevant to you, non-limited, good, or extensive. Your risk tolerance is going to basically ask you are you, you know, do you like to take risks with your money, basically, low, medium, or high? And so, for example, this may help M1 suggest ETFs that are relevant to your risk tolerance level. If you are a low risk tolerance type of person, they may suggest ETFs that are bond related. So they are, you know, there's safety in bonds, so they say. So, you know, you can choose low if that, you know, is something that you want to do. If you are medium risk tolerance, they may have something that is more geared towards bonds, but also has some stocks included. If you are high risk tolerance, they may have all stock funds or something that is a lot riskier than just, you know, plain bonds. So select the risk tolerance that is uh, applicable to you. Here, when it asks about your investment horizon, it's basically asking you how long do you plan to stay invested in these positions that you're going to be investing in with M1 Finance. This is not an app for trading, so this is more so for long-term wealth building, but you can still choose if you want to have a short, less than three-year time horizon, uh, investment horizon, or if you want your funds to stay invested four to six years or longer term, more like eight or more years. This is not anything that they're going to, you know, kind of penalize you for if you stay invested for five years and you chose eight years here. This is just getting to know who you are in your investment horizon, that type of thing. So just select whatever is relevant to you there. 
Now it's asking you how important is liquidity to you? You can choose very important, somewhat or not important. So to break down liquidity, it's basically how easy do you want to get in and out of companies? Say for example, you are investing in Apple. Apple, Apple is a very liquid company. The volume on Apple is high. People are trading in and out of that company all of the time. However, if you are choosing companies that are, say, penny stocks or something like that, they have very low volume a lot of times. So it's not going to be easy for you to get in and out of certain companies with low volume. So they are asking you how important is liquidity to you. Um, so it's, if it's important to you, which is important to me, I say very important. I want to be able to get in and out of companies the way that I, I would like to. So obviously, I'm going to choose companies that have you know, a higher trading volume. So I won't get stuck in any positions like that. Now, this is very easy. How did you hear about it? You can say friend, family, blog, news article. Have you heard about M1 Finance? And you would select that there. Last thing they're going to want to know is your social security number. One thing to note is they say that they are not going to perform a credit check. So they're only using your social security to verify your identity. So make sure that your social security is correct when you enter it there. And then you can continue on. This question is very important. They need to uh, have some information as far as the people that this, uh, this last thing applies to. So for most people, none of the following will apply. If it does, you have to disclose this information to N1 Finance. The first question is if you are affiliated with or work for a broker dealer. So say, for example, you're trying to set up an N1 Finance account and you're actually a broker dealer with TD Ameritrade. You need to make sure that you click that box. If you are a 10% shareholder of a publicly traded company, you need to check that. Also, if you um, or an immediate family member is a current or former public official, make sure that you check that. So most people, this will not apply and you'll go ahead and click none of these apply. That is most common at the bottom. But any of those that are applicable to you, make sure that you click that and disclose that information to M1 Finance during this process. That's it. So you just want to make sure that everything looks okay and you want to make sure that you verify your profile and financial investment profile. If everything looks okay, just click confirm and they will um, move you on to the third step. So, so far we've created our stock pie, we've opened our account, and now we are going to go to the funding part here. So now for funding your account, all you want to do is connect your bank account to M1 Finance. And to do that, you can connect instantly, which is my preferred method, or you can do it manually, okay? So, or you can skip it and fund it later. You do not have to fund your account whenever you open up an M1 Finance account. You can do that at a later point. But if you're really serious about getting invested, go ahead and get this part out of the way so that you can go ahead and verify your bank account and start making deposits into M1 Finance so that you can begin investing. So you have to make sure, again, that you verify your email first before you try to connect your bank account. So if you haven't done that, just go ahead and go to your email, verify your email address, and then you can move on with the connection process. Now, if you choose to connect instantly to your bank account, they're going to use a system called Plaid. And what this is going to do is to, um, you're going to click continue and it's going to ask you which bank account you're trying to connect. And at that point, you'll need to enter in your username and password for your bank. And it's going to automatically connect your M1 finance account to your checking account. If you want to take the longer path, you want to choose to manually connect your account, that's going to be an option as well. And with that, you just want to enter in your bank name, your account type, whether it's a checking account or whatever type of account it is, your routing and account number. After you enter in that information and press submit, what M1 will do is send test deposits to your account. And you'll just need to continue to check to see when those test accounts hit your account. And you'll be able to go in and verify the test deposits. And um, at that point, you'll be confirmed and you'll be able to connect your account. This takes several days. I don't like to wait, but if you want to do it that long way, you definitely can um, connect your bank account manually there. So it's really up to you how you choose to connect your bank account. All right, so after we have all of that set up, the next thing you'll do is look up here, it'll say we need some additional, verific additional verification to finish setting up your account. So as I stated before, um, you'll need to go ahead and scan in your driver's license, a utility bill or a bank statement to make sure that you have this ready to go. So at this point, they're gonna say that, you know, you basically will, not, will be prevented from using their system, their investment products, you won't be able to make any deposits or do any trading activity until you complete the verification process. So you have to do this part in order to continue. So with that, it's gonna say, um, please upload the documents via this 
attachment file down here. So all you need to do is take your driver's license and a utility bill or a bank statement with your current address. So you're gonna have two things, a driver's license and either a utility bill or a bank statement with your current address. And what you wanna do is upload these documents here. One thing to note is, is if you're opening up a joint account, make sure that you upload the driver's license for both people on the account. Um, and then you can continue from there. Just upload everything here and then you want to press continue. After that, they'll have all the information you need. You'll be taken back to this screen and you'll be able to add this stock pie to your portfolio, okay? So it's as simple as that. You create your stock pie, you open up your account, you fund your account, and now I'm going to walk you through um, how to verify your stock pie before you add it to your portfolio. So once you go back here, let me just go back real quick. You'll be able to view details on your first stock pie. And what you wanna do is just take a look and see if everything is the way that you want it to be before you start adding it to your portfolio. So here, whenever you click on that view details, you'll be brought to this page and you can see um, your allocations here. I've added AMD, that's one of my great companies that I like, um, but so there are eight slices of your pie here. If it looks good to you, then you're good to go. You can click add to portfolio and it will be added to your portfolio. So any contributions you make, those slices of your pie will receive the designated allocation. All right, just to walk you through a little bit on this page here, whenever you go to your M1 account on your portfolio tab, you'll see over here, auto invest. I always have mine switched to on. This means that any contribution that I make to M1, they're gonna automatically invest it for me. It's very hands-off, set it and forget it. I love that. And also it's gonna ask you what minimum cash balance you want. I have zero because I want all of my money and my cash invested. But say if you always wanna keep a cash balance on M1 for whatever reason, you would say what minimum cash balance you have there. Now they will automatically invest your um, balance or your deposits for you as long as it's over $25. So it takes $100 to set up a regular brokerage account, $500 to set up your um, retirement account. Say, for example, you want to set up an IRA account, you need at least $500 to do that with. But if it's just a regular brokerage account, you can start with $100. And whenever you make deposits, um, whenever that amount gets up to at least $25, they'll go ahead and automatically invest that for you. So I love that feature about M1 Finance. Now, here's the great part. So on your main page, you'll be able to click on transfers up here at the top. And from there, you'll be able to click on move money. And from here, you can set up your one-time transfer. Say, for example, today, if you want to start with $100, you can go ahead and transfer $100 into that account your M1 account, or if you want to go ahead and set up recurring transfers, say if you want to do $100 a month or $25 a week, whatever you have, you can go ahead and set up a recurring transfer there. And it will go ahead and transfer that money from your checking account that you connected to your M1 account and automatically invest it the way that you designate it on your stock pie. So that is why I love M1 Finance. You can choose you know, the frequency and the day of the month. If you want to do it monthly, you can do it weekly, however you want to do it. It makes it very, very very easy for you to do so. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I will be doing a second tutorial on how to buy individual slices of your pie and a couple other neat things that I like about M1 Finance. But for now, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope it has been helpful. I will see you in the next tutorial.